Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to another ATP video. In today's video, we will be talking about heart and coronary anatomy and the setting of heart ischemia. Trust me, it's not the usual anatomy that you have in mind. It may seem a challenging topic, but once you understand it, everything will make sense. We will start our anatomy discussion by drawing a cross section view of the heart, which can be referred to as short axis. And here's the long axis view of the heart. Here we have left ventricle, right ventricle, apex, and the atrioventricular groove. Now if we were to draw an imaginary plane that comes through the left ventricle as such, what would we have is a view called a two-chamber view. The two chambers are left ventricle and left atrium. And this would be a four-chamber view. Okay, now if we were to take this two-chamber view and we were to make cross-sections of the heart as such, this will give us a short axis view again. And for each level, we'll just draw a line. So we have the apex, the midventricle, then at the base. Now we understand this, let's take a look at the heart in the short axis view. When we look at the electrocardiograms, echocardiograms, and the nuclear cardiology reports, all of these reports discuss the heart in terms of segments, i.e., inferior wall, lateral wall, etc. And this is the schema that refers to those segments as we've divided the heart into apex, mid, and base. We can further divide each level into further segments. We can divide the base of the left ventricle into six segments. So the way I look at it is first we have the septum, then we have the lateral wall, up top is anterior, below is inferior. The septum is divided into what we call as anterior septum, and inferior septum and the lateral wall is similarly divided into anterolateral and inferiolateral the mid level has a similar segmentation and so we denote the anterior segment and the inferior segment the septum is divided again into anterior septum and inferior septum and the lateral wall is divided into anterolateral and inferiolateral now at the apex instead of using six segments we can divide it into four segments. These four segments are the anterior, the inferior, the lateral, and the septal segments. So you can now see that we have divided the heart chamber anatomically, and this anatomic sort of segmentation is important to understand the heart ischemia. Now for coronary anatomy, there are two coronary arteries, a left and a right one. The left coronary artery starts as the left main, and then that left main divides to provide the LAD or left anterior descending artery and the left circumflex. The right coronary artery arises from the right coronary sinus to supply the heart on the right side. Now it's important to know where these arteries run. The left main divides to give the LAD and the LAD goes in the anterior interventricular groove. The LAD gives branches which are septal perforators and the diagonals. Again, the left main gives the left circumflex artery. The left circumflex travels in the left atrioventricular groove and its main branch vessels are going to be the obtuse marginals. Finally, we have the right coronary artery and this artery travels in the right atrioventricular groove and it gives rise to the acute marginal branches. The RCA divides to give the PDA or posterior descending artery and posterior lateral branches. Okay, so the artery that gives the PDA or the posterior lateral branches denotes the dominance. So rough numbers just to keep in mind, 80% of people are going to be right dominant, which means that the PDA comes off the right coronary artery. 15% are going to be left dominant, and 5% are going to be co-dominant. So in the left dominant circulation, the PDA will come off the left circumflex. And in co-dominant, that distribution is shared between the right coronary artery and the left circumflex. Now in terms of the distribution, if you are in the CCU and you have a patient and you've been told that this patient has an anterior and an anteroseptal infarct, what are we talking about? We're talking about an infarct that affects the anterior segment and anteroseptal segment. 
and this could run from the base all the way up to the apex. Typically, most of the apex is in that distribution, and the affected vessel in this case is going to be the LAD. The next infarct that we might hear about is an inferior infarct. And in an inferior infarct, typically the inferior wall is affected. It can also affect the inferior aspect of the apex. Remember that the right coronary artery gives the posterior descending artery in 80% of the cases. And the PDA gives septal branches that supply the inferior part of the septum. So the inferior septal segment can also be affected with inferior infarcts. And in this case, we should think about the right coronary artery. Now the lateral wall is a little bit challenging because there is some watershed or sharing of the lateral wall with the LAD, the RCA, and the left circumflex artery. So when you have a lateral infarction, it could be either of these three branches, but mainly think of the left circumflex artery. So here, what we've seen is the segmentation of the heart and how this relates to the coronary arterial distribution. You will learn with your clinical experience in looking after patients with acute coronary syndromes how the electrocardiographic findings can correlate with the coronary artery distribution and subsequently the area of abnormality on cardiac imaging. To sum up, remember in infarcts with anterior distribution and anterior septal distribution, we worry about the LAD. If the infarcts involve the inferior distribution or inferior septal segments, we worry about the right coronary artery, and with the lateral wall infarcts, we have to consider the left circumflex artery. And with that, we will conclude this video. We hope that we were able to provide you with a better understanding of some of the nomenclature that's used to describe coronary artery territories in relation to cardiac anatomy. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to get our latest explanations. Thanks for watching.